surgery immediately. I just need him to be a little bit more stable before I can operate. Can you please give us a minute? Yeah, sure. Room five. Here's what we're going to do. 
you're gonna get stronger. Your body, your mind. I need you. <sighs> we can do this. I help you. I'm not going anywhere. I love you. I know you hear me. <laughs> Come on, David. Please fight. Please heal. You have to heal. You have to fight. She's in with him. You want to talk to her? Yeah, uh, thanks, sir. Um, what's really going on? Two guys came into the store and tried to rob it. Your dad was shot in the chest. Uh, he's very weak. He's, uh... I'm here with him and dad's going to be okay. Code blue, room five. His vitals have stabilized. We need to get him to the OR now. All doctors to the ER. Honey, I have to go. They're, they're prepping him for surgery. Code blue, room five. All nurses to the nurse's station. like this. The bullet came out clean, no complications. There was no fragmentation of the fractured bones. It was clean. Uh, I just checked on a post-op and I'll go if he has a break. <laughs> yeah. When can we see him? Now. Uh, just immediately. It's a little compressed, but it's ready for you. Well, thank you, Doctor. Okay. Say, is his daughter's name Rachel? Uh, no, it's Tiffany. He kept talking about Rachel before he went under. He just said her name several times. Um, it's Tiffany. Uh, I'll tell you, this is the kind of story that people write books about. Wow. Because that man should have never survived. <laughs> you move to these villas that are on the beach. They say the place is gorgeous. You've got a, an activity center, you got a two-car garage, you got a pool, you got two pools. You got hot tubs, jacuzzis, saunas. You got the whole thing, the whole nine. Yes, but for us we'd have to sell our house to them. <laughs> yeah. That sounds like a scam. Don't do that. Besides, you have a free time share in heaven just waiting on you. Hmm. 
friend up. Hmm. I would like right. to help with the church bake sale. I saw the note. Actually, that got postponed until next Saturday. The church is doing the funeral for Mr. Pickerel. Uh, looks like his timeshare program came due. <laughs> <laughs> Stop it. Stop. Oh. He was a nice man. He was a nice man. We should go. Did you see him much up at the store? Um, every now and then, I guess. Yeah. We'll go. We should go. Uh, how, how about the Mountaineers? I mean, they're going to look pretty good this year. Oh. Okay. Hey. That was a good dinner. Yeah? Thank you. You're welcome. Hey, did you talk to Tiffany today? Not today. Huh. She called my work. She wanted to check on me. Yeah? I'd love to go see them. You know, she's talking about starting curse in a preschool early. Well, let's do it. Yeah? Yeah? yeah. Okay. okay. I'll call her. Mm, Sunday. Can we go Sunday? Sure. Thank you. I think I'm going to go out to the barn. Tinker with the Jeep. My beloved Rachel, I don't know where to start, or even if you'll ever read this, but seeing you was one of the happiest moments of my life, if only for a brief moment. You are as beautiful as I imagined you'd be, even more so. I am so sorry for what happened, for what I did. I know you can't forgive me, and I will never forgive myself. I just want you to know I love you. I always will. You see, folks, I spent my life striving to be a better surgeon. In fact, I volunteered to take the most challenging cases, the life and death cases and mostly the sure death cases. But this case, this case was different. As I write in my book, this guy, this man in his early 50s, came into my ER dead, unresponsive. He was resuscitated and we get a pulse weaker than anything I've ever seen. He's been shot in the chest. And with chest wounds and splintered bones and so close to the heart, this man has no chance of recovery, none. But God thought differently, amen. And as a scientist, as a physician, when I opened that man up that day, I became a believer. Thank you all very much. All right, so let's see here. All right, we fly to Cleveland tomorrow. Uh, we've got two bookstores there. Oh, and, and a local church there too. It's a good size one. 
I just spoke mm -hmm. with the pastor there and he said that they've got a Christian bookstore that's like right next door to the church. So, so I'd like for you to say a few words and well, we get to sell some books. Yeah, sure, we can do that. Oh, oh, and get this too. Also, I spoke with the producer of Fox and he pitched the story to Randall Getz. Okay. He loved it. Yes. But he wants the guy. He wants you and him both on the show. You think we can make that happen? I don't know. I mean, he lives. Oh, I, I, I know where he lives. We're good on that, but David, David Burroughs. How, how do you know that? I never use his real name. <laughs> it's my job to know those things. <laughs> anyway, I was thinking that I'd reach out to him when we get back from Cleveland, if that's okay with you. Yeah, sure, I guess. Okay, great. Oh, oh, oh one other thing I wanted to show you. Look at this, Doctor. We are now looking at two weeks on the New York Times bestseller list. I mean, okay. it, it, nothing can stop us now. That's a miracle right there. <laughs> <laughs>
David? What are you thinking? Pastor, I'm, I'm sorry I haven't been to church as much. David, you don't need to apologize. Not to me, at least. I've been thinking a lot about heaven. What do you know about it? Well, it is one of, if not the greatest truths of the Bible. To be absent from the body is to be in the presence of the Lord. You know, they said I died. 20 minutes or so. I, I remember that. David, that doctor that worked on you, uh, Dr. Nelson, I believe, his book about miracles, that was about you, wasn't it? Did you read it? No. I was there. Sweat. Are you sure you're okay? Yeah, I am fine. David, who's Rachel? Rachel? Nobody, it's no Rachel. It was just a dream, honey. It's okay.
I help you? Hi, I'm Thomas Devano. I work for Dr. Nelson. You must be Heather Burroughs. I am. Ah, is your husband home? No, he's not. He'll be here in a couple minutes. What do you want, Mr. Devano? Oh, please, just Thomas. Your husband's story, the story that he shared in Dr. Nelson's book. You do know the book, right? Of course. Well, Mrs. Burroughs, your husband's story has affected thousands, maybe millions. We don't want anything to do with that, sir. I get it. I, I really do. But your husband's story, well, it needs to be shared with the world. Mr. Devano, look, oh, if you don't mind, we're, we're, we're trying to go on a vacation. Maybe you can come back another time. Okay? Hello. Can I help you? Ah, Mr. Burroughs. Yes. I'm Thomas Devano. I, I work with Dr. Nelson. He would love to have you join him for a, a small television program uh, just to talk about your surgery. When? Huh, Thursday. This Thursday. In New York City. Sure. Our son lives there. We can visit him. Great. Just great. I'll take care of all the arrangements. Oh, and uh, here's my card. No. This Honey? is not okay. Wait a minute. Honey. This... It's okay. Great. I'll let them know you're coming. Are we all packed? Ready? Sure. I'll go get our bags. Well, I just love the city. It's been here a while. You're welcome. <sighs> yeah. You know, your dad is. He's always zoned out, but... You think your father is going through a spiritual journey? I'm the awakening maybe. Like church? Sense? No, I don't think so. No need to worry, honey, okay? Hey, Dad, you okay? Dad. I don't see any harm in it. Aside from the city, we can go see Mike and take him to dinner. Well, I'm glad Kyle could get off so I could come with you guys. Uh, we're delighted to have you. So what are they doing back home? Kyle took Carson to get a haircut. I wonder if you need to get a haircut and have that. Sorry, Dad. Nothing. I'm going to take a walk. Would anyone care to join me? No, we have a bit of shopping to do. Okay. I'll meet you back at the hotel. Get a wet washcloth, quick, I please. Just, I just need to catch my breath. No, 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 no. Just give me a second. Baby, no. What is wrong? Are you okay, Dad? Yeah, I just, I'm sorry. I got, I got lost Honey. in the parking garage. Going across the street? Yeah, I'm, I'm fine now. I'm, I'm fine. Are you sure this interview's a good idea? No. I mean, yes. I just, 
I'm fine. I just needed to look at your, your lovely face, that's all. I'll see you guys tomorrow. I love you. Okay. All right, honey. It's okay. I just need to lay down. Tomorrow is the big day. Okay, so Dr. Nelson, I've been kind of trying to plan out our schedule for the next month. Listen, the book sales are still up. We're still on the bestseller list. And it looks like I could get you in Boston, the 24th through the 26th, if that works. I don't know. I have to check my schedule. Oh, no, 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 no. You, you got to make it work, really. <laughs> I was just being polite. They're willing to pay twice your normal rate. Okay, with the sales we're having, I, I trust you. Thank you, because I know a good opportunity when I see it. Oh, well, good morning, sunshine. <laughs> How are you this morning? Are you all ready? Um, yeah, I'm ready, yeah. All right, ma'am. Mr. Right. Burrow, it's good to see you. Can we have you guys on set? We'll be ready in 30 seconds. All right. Okay. All right. You guys are up. Yeah. All right. All right. Yeah. Break a leg. Oh. I love you. Good luck. Good luck. All right. Why, well, hey guys, they're going to have a monitor for us so we can watch everything that's going on right from back here. All right, you guys are going to be right here. Watch your stuff. Good evening, America, and welcome to Getz Live. I'm Randall Getz. Do you believe in miracles? Well, this doctor and former surgeon says that he only used to believe in science, that he was an agnostic. But after treating this patient, he began believing in God. And yes, of course, miracles. We have Dr. Rick Nelson, and most of you know he is the physician who authored the book Medical Miracles. Thank you for joining us, Doctor. Thank you for having me. And folks, for the first time, it gets exclusive. We have the gentleman behind the book, the patient, the survivor, if you will, the true miracle himself, Mr. David Burroughs. Mr. Burroughs, thank you for being on Guest Live. Uh, thank you. <clears throat> well, first off, I have been told that this is the first time you two have actually met. Well, of course, since the surgery, was well, that right? I uh, saw Mr. Burroughs a few times uh, after the surgery when I was attending to him. And now you have a New York Times bestseller. Yeah, I, and I'm so grateful. It would not have been possible without Mr. Burroughs. I urge everyone out there to get a copy of the book and read it to understand the true magnitude of the miracle which occurred. Mr. Burroughs, now, have you had a chance to read the book? Uh, no, I haven't. Um, but I've heard a lot about it, and I'm very happy for Dr. Nelson's success. Are you a religious man, Mr. Burroughs? I would say I believe in God. Well, the good doctor over here is saying that he has found God after witnessing your miraculous recovery. Well, it, it wasn't just his rapid recovery from surgery. No, no, no. Yeah. It was that he survived after being brain dead for almost 20 minutes. You mentioned that you had several questions for Mr. Burroughs, but hadn't been able to ask. I'm not sure this is the right place. So do you still have those questions? Well, yeah, maybe a couple. Mr. Burroughs, do you mind? I, you don't have anything to hide. I guess the main question that I've had, who is Rachel? In the book, uh, it says that you made a few comments uh, just before you uh, went under surgery about this, this Rachel, where you said you were very sorry and ashamed. Now, is this a, is this a girlfriend? You're married, right? Well, it looks like we're not going to get an answer to that one, Doctor. Anything else, perhaps? No. She was my daughter. I'm sorry. Rachel is my daughter. She was or is? My notes here say you have only one daughter, Tiffany. No. I have two daughters. Oh, uh, OK. Tell us about Rachel. Rachel lives in heaven. She's lived in heaven most of her life. So wait, wait, wait. You spoke with her. Oh my, David. Don't tell me. Did you have one of those out-of-body experiences? What? And what is it? go to heaven? What's going on? Did, did you see what? a light? Wait, Mike. Did you follow Mike. the light? 
I'm not much of a fan of heaven myself, but I am a big fan of those who say they've been there. <laughs> Are you awake? Heather? I'm awake. Can we talk? Sure. I guess I have some explaining to do. When I was a senior in high school, I got a girl pregnant. We planned to have the baby. We even gave her a name. But our parents found out. We had an abortion. Rachel? Yes. And you saw her? In heaven? Yes, I knew it was her. And she knew who I was. But it didn't matter. She still loved me. I could feel it. What does she look like? <laughs> She's so beautiful. I'm sorry I didn't tell you sooner. I didn't know you in high school. I guess I blocked it out. But she was, is, beautiful. Why didn't you tell me? I was so confused. I thought I'd gone mad. Why you? Why did God choose you? Maybe he's trying to tell me something. Tell you what? I don't know. I know. What a mess. Doesn't make sense. No, but I know it's real. It's real. David, what a pleasant surprise. I just saw him. He is so happy. So, um, what brings you here? I was hoping I could have a word with you. Of course. Is everything all right? Yeah, I guess. Sort of. Why don't we, um, have a seat and chat?
Okay. Have a seat. Oh. <laughs> he doesn't actually look like this. So, how is it that I can help you? I don't know if you can. Just thought it would be nice to have someone to talk to. I've been seeing things. Seeing things? When I died, something happened. I went somewhere. I think that somewhere was heaven. Like in the book? It's not all in the book. Why not? I wasn't clear at the time. But now it's all coming back to me. In my dreams. And what are you seeing? A girl. A young girl. Beautiful angel. And what is she doing? I think she's trying to show me something. She takes my hand and leads me across heaven. It is so beautiful. Then she takes me to a cliff and there are angels in a circle. And what are these angels doing? Praying. All praying. Who are they praying for? A person. A person on fire. And who's the person? I don't know. Hmm. Do, uh, do you think it could be you? Maybe me. I don't know. I thought maybe you heard about this in the scripture. Well, angels certainly are known for being God's messengers. And, um, perhaps they're trying to tell you something. Yeah. But what? I am so excited about today's show, Heaven. With me today are two gentlemen, one who's seen it and one who preaches about it. Mr. Burroughs, David, tell us about Heaven. Uh, I saw cities and angels, lots of them, thousands, but, and people like you and me. Well, how about the Bible? Did you see the Bible in heaven? No. So no preaching, no churches, no Bible in heaven. Perhaps maybe you went through the wrong door. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies, Ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen I, I give, give you, you the man, man who went, went to heaven. heaven. Fact, Fact or fiction? fiction. A sinner? or saint, a miracle, or the manic mind of a madman? These are some of the questions that I have, that we all have, and soon we will have the opportunity to ask, because I've invited Mr. Burroughs to an event next week, an inquiry, if you will, with a panel of experts to get to the truth to ask the $50 million question. Now we all know that there's life after death, but is there life after heaven? Well, we will find out.
Hey, honey, how'd it go? No, no, I'm good. Hey, um, I was thinking about taking you out for dinner. You know, kind of a celebration. What are we celebrating? I don't know. A new member of the family? Well, maybe next week. Are you okay? I, I, I didn't mean to press it. No, I'm, it's okay. I'm fine. I, I'm just not in the mood. I'll see you when you get here. Bye. Gentlemen, let's get this show on the road. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome. Mr. David Burroughs is a grocery store manager in Bridgeport, West Virginia. And as most of you know, several months ago, Mr. Burroughs shocked the nation with his vivid details of heaven. In fact, he alleged meeting his unborn daughter, Rachel. To date, we have been unable to verify the birth or even the abortion procedure of this child. But his story has caused quite the debate. So tonight, we bring together the world's utmost experts on heaven, the afterlife, and spiritual journeys. Let's talk heaven, gentlemen. Well, according to John 1.18, no one has ever seen God. To say that you have seen God is really blasphemous. Stories like Mr. Burroughs are as dangerous as they are seductive. They give people an unbiblical, twisted view of heaven. Yes, and uh, they imbibe in a, in a superficial, a shallow, a subjective, a form of spirituality. I mean, studying these mystical accounts of a supposed journey into the afterlife leads to confusion, contradiction, false hope, bad doctrine, and a host of other things. Look, we live in a narcissistic culture, and it shows in all these accounts of people claiming they've been to heaven. It's as if they're seeing paradise in a mirror, and they're standing in the foreground. Far too much of the present interest in heaven, angels, and the afterlife stems from the carnal curiosity of the New Age movement. I believe that those who demand to know more than scripture tells us about heaven are sinning. And even though the Bible still leaves many questions unanswered, I believe what God has revealed in scripture is the only legitimate place to get a clear understanding 
of the Heavenly King. Thank you, expert panel. Pastor Gross. In Luke chapter 11, the disciples asked Jesus, Lord, teach us to pray. Teach us about God. Teach us about your kingdom. Now, here was Jesus' chance to affirm what this expert panel here today believes that learning about the kingdom of God is off limits, that your relationship with God is a one-way street. So what did Jesus say? Here's how he said to do it. When you want to connect with God, say this, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. You all remember that. Jesus taught us how to intimately connect with God. And rightfully so, God created heaven for his children. And we, we are all God's children. My friend here suggested that trying to understand heaven is wrong. When in fact, God is instructing us to bring heaven to earth. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. In order for God's healing and restoration to begin on earth, we must understand heaven. Eternity is eternity. I've always wondered why churches don't preach more about heaven. I guess they're scared. But Jesus himself talked about heaven over 100 times. In fact, heaven is the most talked about place in the Bible. Scriptures reference many people that have witnessed heaven. I guess that makes me part of the club. I would like to close with my favorite. And Jacob had a dream about a ladder that rested on the earth and reached into the heavens. And God's angels were ascending and descending, going up and down the ladder, ascending and descending. Angels carrying prayers up to heaven and bringing blessings down. We as a church, we need to preach about heaven. We need to celebrate heaven. You don't have to believe that I want to. Please believe in heaven. Thank you.
Jacob's Ladder. Pastor, what are you doing here? Well, when I heard of your wife's condition, I thought she could use all the extra prayers she could get. Maybe a miracle. We'll take all the help heaven will spare. How's she doing? Prognosis isn't good. But there are some promising new therapeutics. Excuse me, Mr. Uh, Burroughs. Doctor, how is she? Can I see her? Uh, yeah, but please, just one at a time. Oh, uh, would you, you mind if I... Um, no, Pastor, thank you. Pastor. How is she? She is responding favorably to the new regimen, so it's actually quite remarkable. It's like a miracle. So when you do go in, please be brief, because she needs a rest, all right? Yes, thank you, doctor, thank you. Of course. All this time she was trying to warn me, to tell me to pray, for all of us to pray. You see, it wasn't about Rachel's life. It wasn't about my life. It was about Heather, that she needed us. She needed our strength. She needed our hope. She needed our prayers. God reached out, reached out to me that day as a sign a warning, an omen. And through God, the life of another has been touched. Our lives have been touched. And hopefully through my story, many more will be touched. And as for Rachel, I thank you, for I know you will live on eternally in the Lord's land. and within me. Then when 